Hi, this is Andy Evans, um, part nine of making a guitar in your garage. Um, okay, uh, on the last podcast, well, my little cat has come in today and he's uh, meowing. He needs, needs some food. Okay, so, in, in a bit, cat, in a bit, cat. I'm busy. Um, okay, on my last podcast, um, I was making this guitar neck and... Um, I was, I, I, it was half cut out on the bandsaw. I finished cutting it out on the bandsaw. I cleaned up the edges on my vertical um, um, belt sander with a little guide and screwed the pattern on. And the guide followed the pattern. The guide followed the pattern. Uh, so this is where I'm up to at the moment. I've also cut the angle for the headstock. Um, I did that on my table saw. Um, Basically, you mark that where the nut's going to be, and you cut uh, about four, three mil before where the nut is going to be on the table saw. And I know from experience, if I cut that, if I cut that angle like that from the from there to the nut, um, I've got the perfect angle. It's uh, it's not as steep as a Gibson. It's a bit less, but it's just enough to keep the strings tight over over the nut. Uh, it's just quite a nice angle. The wedge piece that I've cut from the front will end up going on the back. Um, if I can find that now, I'll show you. Um, oh, it's, it's gone AWOL, but there's, there's a wedge piece that um, went from the front. That piece that I cut off from the front goes on the back like this. So you end, that gets glued on, which I'll do in the next uh, podcast. Uh, and then you then you just sand it and shape it. Okay, so the next stage is to mark a centre line. Um, you have to make, mark a perfect centre line. Um, this is very important for. I have a centre line on the guitar body and I have a centre line here. So I'm going to check now and see if it fits. Uh, you want a nice tight fit. Just like that, just so it's quite hard to push in. That's a nice fit, that fits quite well. Um, I don't know if you can see the centre line is, is lining up. I don't know if you can see that, the neck and the body. Um, if you use a square edge here and a square edge on the body, you should end up with a perfectly straight, uh, straight neck, you know. Okay, so. The next stage, if I can get that out, is to route um, a truss rod um, channel. Okay, this is um, a jig I made a few couple of months ago. Um, basically, as I, as I, I'll just move the, the camera a minute. Basically, as I said in an earlier podcast. Um, a truss rod is a, a bar that is it's in a it's in a slot that's like this. If you imagine a curved slot, when the strings pull forward like this, it pulls the neck forward. When you tighten the truss rod, it does this, so it counteracts the, the tension of the strings. You've got about 100 kilo on the on the strings, so it's very important to have a metal truss rod inserted in the neck. Um, this is a little pattern that I made. A little jig I made for routing out um, um, truss rods. Oh, that's my router with the guide there. I spent 10 minutes yesterday re, um, re-drilling this and making it central because it just wasn't central. And if, you, if this is not central your guide, everything you route is going to come off centre. Um, so I spent you know, a good 10-15 minutes, I re-drilled some new holes, made it perfectly central. So that fits into, it, into the... Um, I don't know if you can see the guide there, that little uh, guide will fit in there perfectly. It's a plunge router, so you plunge like this, lock it, and do your routing. Um, I'll give you a few dimensions. Uh, the deepest point is at the 7th fret, 7th to 8th fret is okay, you know, on a guitar. Um, without the fingerboard on, if you route down 
at the seventh fret here to about 12 mil and you come up to about um, 8 mil here uh, and the same here about 9 mil 9 mil here 9 mil here 12 mil in the middle you'll have a slight curve uh, and that's just enough to give you that um, account uh, the account just enough to counteract the string tension um, so you need to make one of these you can get a lot of dimensions off um, off off Google for exact depth here exact depth here but the most important thing is in the middle you're looking at um, 12 millimeter around about seven for eight breath um, <coughs> what I've done is the pattern when I screw this pattern on I've got some holes here what's good about making holes like this into um, you know things you, you're gonna you're gonna work on these holes are now going to be locating holes for for this and that's the way I've made it so things locate afterwards you know the same screw holes will locate um, into something else um, if you can do that with every pattern you make you, you're onto a winner you know um, this has got some screw holes in like this is going to be under the bridge uh, this is going to be under the neck socket this is going to be under the humbucker i mean if you can screw the the first two holes you you put in for screws if they can locate with the next pattern for like the humbuckers or uh whatever it's very good doing it that way and then you you're always um you can just bang a pattern on screw it on you don't have to measure you know it's very good when you're doing um, reproductions of guitars this you know it's for one-offs it's not possible but if you're doing like many many strats or tellies that's the way you do it okay so I'm gonna fasten this in now um, I'm, uh, I'm just let you, I'm just gonna explain about the trusser a little bit there's two different ways you can adjust your trusser you can have adjust it at the body end or you can adjust it at the neck end um, it's a bit more complicated doing it at the neck, neck end. Um, I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm going to keep it at the body end for now. It also it gives it a little bit more strength when you do it at the body end because um, uh, you're not drilling any holes through here. You're not weakening this structure by anything. Um, okay, let's get it fastened in. I need my drill. Um, I can use that screwdriver instead. But basically, I put this in, put it inside the little box, locate the holes that are from the pattern before, and screw it up. And that should be central. Okay. I have a centre line here so I can see if it's going off centre and that's perfectly in the centre. I'm happy with that. Tighten those up. And then the next thing is clamp it to the bench. Um, like this. Tighten these other two screws up. Okay, I can't move. So one more screw here, and I'm ready to route. Okay. Um, if you have any suggestions for. Um, you know guitars that you think I should make or any colours that you'd like to see or any um, uh, woods you'd like to see that might be a bit more difficult but uh, any suggestions or ideas or um, you know um, if you spot things I'm doing wrong please let me know please leave a comment you know and uh, I'll get back to you okay so this goes in here like that. 
Plunge it so it's touching the seventh fret. I've marked where the seventh fret is, which is right in the middle. And then I plug it in and round. Um, set this to 12, 12 mil here. Uh, if I have a flat bit drill, I'd put that under there. You can use the gauge, but the gauge is not always correct. Um, so basically, that's it. I'm not, I'm not going to do that now. Make lots of noise, but you, you route. You, you uh, start here. You push in, plunge a little, and a couple of millimeters more. Release this, plunge it more. Route. Eventually, once you get to 12 in the middle, finished. Take it off, done. In the next episode, I'll um, talk about making a good truss rod. Well, I'll make a truss rod in the next episode. I'll talk about it now, actually, how to make a truss rod. Um, I like to keep things simple. If, if I can get, get uh, the metal from a local shop, I will do. Um, the last guitar I made, I used threaded bar, stainless steel threaded bar. Um, a five mil threaded bar. Um, very very simple. Um, I, I had some concerns about it um, grabbing inside the wood. I thought it might grab, you know, because it's threaded all the way along. Normally I have threads at uh, both ends, uh, but it didn't grab. It was okay. It worked perfectly as a truss rod. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some stainless steel uh, bar, cut it to the right length. I'm going to lock a, um, a, a nut on one end. Uh, with some epoxy um, and it's going to be fastened I'm going to route a little piece for the knot it's going to get fastened in epoxy is going to be put here and afterwards a little fill strip is going to be put in um, you know all this is going to go underneath the fingerboard um, so that's the next podcast um, so happy uh, guitar making and um, if you can make yourself a little jig like this for doing your truss rods fantastic Oh, there's something else I should point out. Um, this is for a Gibson type guitar with the truss rod underneath the fingerboard. Now, if you're going to do a Stratocaster, they're done the opposite way. They're done from the back. So this would be the opposite. Basically, it's the same curve, but this way, if you imagine it this way, you know. And you, and you route from the back of the neck. And you put a nice walnut uh, skunk strip in. I think they call them skunk strips. Um, it's a bit more complicated than the Fender one, actually. Um, so I'll keep it simple for now. All right, thanks for watching. And um, I'll see you next time.